Time now for the Friend Zone, where we invite one of our great friends from within the building here at Fox onto the show. Tonight, we're joined by campaign Carl Cameron. Carl, you're my office mate here. It's great, and you stayed late to come on. How do you go from countless Red Bulls on the trail, 22-hour days, missed flights, missed connections, lost luggage, uh, on the air 24-7, you just all of a sudden the election's over, and you've got you've to come down from that somehow. It's like uh, coming off a ski slope and hitting the, the slush when you just get thrown right out of your boots, <laughs> or when the merry-go-round stops and you get thrown off the hobby horse. Um, this one was one, people will talk about how the campaign is two years long. It's really not at Fox. We're kind of unique in the TV world about this. Uh, and you and I were both out there. Yeah. You were covering the Democrats back in those days. When Joni Ernst and uh, Tom Cotton and Cory Gardner yeah. and all these Republicans were running for Congress in 2014, <laughs> we were out there before with Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz and the Democratic candidates who are out there campaigning for the Democratic opponents in those races. So this is like a three-winter race. And you were pounding the pavement, oh. doing great reporting. We've been showing pictures there in between live shots. You're always working the iPhone with the emails, the text, the phone calls, getting new information. But there are some lighter moments out there. Sometimes. Oh, sure. I mean, I actually, I gave up Red Bulls during the Trump campaign. <laughs> no. Because there was a point where it was becoming dangerous for my health. <laughs> and... I mean, we ran into the naked cowboy in New York. We ran into <laughs> I think we have that photo. all kinds of crazy people on the road with them. And there was, there was one particular instance. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump was at the point where he was about to pick his running mate. And he went to Indianapolis in Indiana, hometown of Mike Pence, the governor of mm -hmm. Indiana, former governor of he Indiana. And he was, he, that day he met with Jeff Sessions, he met with Mike Pence, he met with Newt Gingrich. And Brett Baer was doing an interview with uh, Donald. the candidate at that mm -hmm. time. And so both of us were sort of hanging out before the interview and after the interview. And afterwards, he said, hey, look, Newt's coming up to see me in the presidential suite upstairs. <laughs> Want to freak him out? Come with me. Secret Service wasn't too happy about it. They pile us into the service elevator. We go upstairs to the suite. At the moment that Newt Gingrich came into Donald Trump's presidential suite at the Conrad Hotel yeah. in Indianapolis, Donald disappeared, leaving Brett and I standing there like a couple of hunters out of a blind. <laughs> Newt came into the room in. and completely freaked out. And all you could hear was <laughs> Donald laughing like crazy. He thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And obviously, Mr. Gingrich got the joke. So he has a sense of humor. He's a prankster. Absolutely. He does have a sense of humor. So we've got one minute. You have this great passion. And that's part of the reason we do the Friend Zone and outside of the campaign reporting the blues, and you're yeah. raising money for some real interesting people. I'm a huge blues fan. I'm a huge American roots music fan. It goes back to the 1800s, 1900s. Uh, everybody talks about how this is, this what you're looking at here is Music Maker Relief Foundation. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing organization out of Hillsborough, North Carolina. They go all over the Old South, from the Atlantic all the way as far as Texas, looking for old blues musicians who maybe didn't quite get the health care, maybe yeah. didn't quite make the money, make it big. They get them health care, they get them food, they get them clothes. But most importantly, what they do is if they want to work, they get them gigs. And some of these guys are still going. They're 80, 90 years old in some cases. And they kind of pull them out of poverty. They will only help people who have an, have an income of less than $18,000. And in some cases, it's less than ten. Wow. And if they want a gig, they get them gigs. They get them recorded. And they even take them internationally. They've played about, about a million people. Go to musicmakers.org. Help these guys. The music is phenomenal. If you're into hip-hop or rap yep. or rock and roll, Great the Stones piece of Beatles, America. you got to do it. Great piece of America. We appreciate you doing it's it. It's definitely Thanks, a Carl. big, big passion.